everybody. My name is Avery Powell. I'm an educator at the High School of Fashion Industries in the Graphics and Illustration Department. Today, we're here with industry leader in photography, Andrew Werner. Hello. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your Hi, experience with us. My um, pleasure. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to be asking you a few questions about your career. Ready to begin? Let's do it. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about how long you've been working in your position, your industry, a little bit about your backstory. So I've been a full-time self-employed photographer for going on 10 years. It, the time flies so quickly. Uh, it's funny because when you, you hear, when you do what you love, it goes by like this and it's so true. Um, I feel like yesterday I started and today I am where I am. So it's, it's time flies. <laughs> That's what the dream is, right? Find what you love to do, and then it's like you're not really working. You're, you're just exactly. doing your passion. Um, great. And so tell us a little bit about your typical work day now. I know nothing about right now is that typical, but um, maybe a little bit about before these times and now during these times. There is no real typical work day. There, it's, it's crazy because even before the whole work from home craze, I really tried to compartmentalize. I tried to stay organized and set myself up for success with goals and timelines. And for an entrepreneur and someone who is self-employed, especially as a photographer or someone in the creative industry, a nine to five is not realistic. Whether it's nine to five or five to nine, there are so many things to do that even having more hours in the day, you can't comp accomplish enough things. I'm sure you relate to this too. It's, I mean, staying ahead of and on time with social media posts and uh, timelines and projects and outreach and follow-ups. Because once you reach out to someone, there's gonna be that correspondence. So you wanna stay on top of that. And reaching out to potential leads from people because so much of my business has been word of mouth. So when I work with a client or brand and other brands under their umbrella or other people see it, they say, who did the photos? So I'm very grateful for that and word of mouth and people are recommending me. And also, you know, social media, keeping up with Facebook posts. I try to have everything be genuine and real, I find that the move towards that as opposed to the absolutely fabulous filtered life that we all have led in the past, uh, people relate to more of a real approach now. And, you know, I try to keep it genuine because of course we want to be fabulous and glamorous, but it needs to, it needs to have that real factor. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So some days I will be at my desk doing work kind of stuff. Other days I will be on a Zoom call with 15 people from a team with a brand, um, everything from conception to execution for a project, whether it is still life or working for an event and then having a shot list and really building these things with the team. So that way, when it comes time to click the shutter, we know exactly what's going on and leave little to chance. Other days I have the great opportunity to speak to students about how they can, you know, learn some from mistakes I made or even hear things that will help them set themselves up for success. And other days it is me in a tuxedo prior to this uh, at an event or a red carpet or a gala. And, you know, there are also just as many equal times, days and nights, where I'm in, I'm in a baseball hat and my sweats and my glasses cuddled up at my computer. But the variety that I've learned to enjoy about having so many different factors to a day and what goes on in it, it keeps it fresh, it keeps it fun, and it lets me appreciate the crazy busy times. And I've learned in, especially the last year, how to relax. So you take the ebbing and flowing and the craziness and the fun and the glamour and the not so glamour and the planning and put it in together and that's a typical day. <laughs> Wow, thank you. Yeah, so it just sounds like um, sometimes it's more fast paced and then sometimes it's really down to you to keep that structure and to manage your time and to keep it going. Um, so you have to, you have to keep it going. You have to know that, and you have to have this internal drumbeat where, okay, you gotta push yourself. You have to learn from mistakes you may have made, but also stay open to what reaching out to other people can do and learn and just really try to, you have to have this want, you have to have this desire. 
And it sounds like a lot of risk taking too. You know, you have to put yourself out there. And even if you're not the most self confident person, you need to kind of learn how to be confident in your work and push yourself. 1000%. 1000%. Because without experience and without trying new things, you never know what you're even capable of doing. Yeah, and that's kind of what's so interesting about being an entrepreneur, like a, a freelance worker, is that there's no one that's going to be there telling you exactly what to do and what your road is going to be like, right? So it's no. up to you. Not at all. That That's so true because you want to do as much as you humanly can. I mean, that for me at least, I am such a go-getter. I will hustle. I will try to take all the jobs. I will reach out to people. You need to have this drive and this passion. Maybe you can share a little bit about um, that, that passion, like what you like best about the work that you get to do. I know you touched on it a little bit, um, but if there's anything else that comes to mind about um, of course. what you like best about your job. So I've had the opportunity to work with many teams. Every time I work with someone, usually it changes between the hair and the makeup and getting to work with so many different brands and getting to work with so many different creatives because everyone is bringing something from their own past and their own artistic abilities to the table, which is something that I really, really love to do because it just, it lets you learn about other people and other perspectives. Um, so I love working with different hair and makeup teams and uh, even brands have their own stories that they want to tell, which is really fun when you have to, you know, figure out how to tell the story. Um, hair, makeup, um, designers, Designers are always fun to work with because there's an unbelievable wealth of creativity in the industry. And to capture that for me is really what sparks my passion. Um, what else do I love? I love just being able to create something. Um, having someone come to me and to trust my abilities and say, here's my vision, go. And I've had many clients who expect me to show up and produce I've worn many different hats. So it's everything from producing something and the finite little details, or I've had some people be like, hey, we're taking care of everything, just show up and click away. So you get to really have this huge expanse of experience um, and every day, like I mentioned, is really different. Um, it sounds like you have to be pretty flexible and ready to kind of think on your toes. Um, yes. And um, collaborate, like be a really good team member. And, One million um, percent. And those qualities also come in when there are things that I don't love so much. Um, some things that I don't love so much are dealing with a million different personalities. Um, people often misinterpret photography as, oh, this is this fun thing that you do for fun. I'm like, nope, this is my livelihood. This is my career. So um, dealing with different personalities and different leadership and different uh, people who bring their own stories and their own sometimes baggage to the table and knowing what they expect. So people are like, oh, you're your own boss. You don't have to worry about a thing. I'm like, yes, I am my own boss, but I, instead of having one person to report to, I can have 15 at a time, each with their own needs. So it's a, it's a little bit like, not only am I a photographer, not only am I sometimes art directing, not only am I sometimes putting my creative juices in here, but I also play psychologist. <laughs> I let people vent to me. And you have to learn um, a little bit about how to approach situations. Photography is a business. Uh, being self-employed, it's a business. And you have to learn how to take the professional side of it and the creative, but also the corporate. And sometimes those worlds aren't the most fun to deal with. Um, going back to some of the things I have to do on a daily basis is follow up with people, making sure that things are paid out on time or points for a contract are honored. And while it's not the most fun thing, you learn about yourself, you learn what you are possible of doing, possible to do, and it's okay. Um, when people say, hey, can you just take a quick headshot of me? No, because that's not only the time that I'd be shooting, it's the time retouching. And then what are you using this headshot for? Oh, for business and to make money? Gotcha. So yes, you're gonna pay me. And <laughs> one of the things I've learned is it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to things, to have your own self-worth, but you have to believe in yourself. So it's a lot of things that go into uh, that's being, such great you advice. being an entrepreneur. I, I feel like that's so hard to learn is to value your own work and, um, and put yourself out there. 
Um, are there any other like interests, abilities, skills that you think a person or one of our students might um, need in order to be successful in this oh, career? How much time do we have? The list can go <laughs> on and on. I mean, the it's certainly an interest in photography if you want to be a photographer, you know. But the passion, drive, the ability to learn, and the desire to learn, like I mentioned, you, you have to want to soak things up and then be able to apply them. You have to want to do these things. And, you know, alongside that comes with taking critique and feedback. You can't always take things personally. I mean, I've had times where I've reached out to people and said, hey, I think I'd be perfect for this. And they said, no. I'm like, okay. And it wasn't something personal. It wasn't what they were looking for. So having the ability to hear feedback and listen to feedback and digest feedback and then come out a stronger person is such, such a powerful ability that people learn over time. It took me a while to do this. I'd really thin skin when I came into this, but I've learned that not everything is personal about me. It could not be what they're looking for. I mean, it, it comes down to communication skills. You need to be able to communicate what you're, what you want. And if someone asks you something, be able to have an answer that answers the question within the realm of what was asked. Um, you may not be a huge on-camera personality or someone who's an extrovert, but the power that comes with being able to articulate what you are looking for, what you need as a person and an artist and a creator, but also what you may need from someone. Um, the communication skills are applicable to so many different factors with a career or any career, not just being a photographer or an artist or an entrepreneur, you're gonna need these regardless of what you do. And if you don't know something, ask. There is no harm in asking something. We don't know everything. The ability to learn. I learn something new every day and I enjoy, I relish in this because if you don't know it, you don't know what you don't know. And just just to grab and absorb knowledge is, is really important. Um, and another thing is to have a infrastructure of business. Because again, photography is a business. And to set yourself up, uh, the skills of setting up a business to know what you need to do, um, how to reach out to clients, what's appropriate to say. You can't just say, you know, I need something from you or I want to do this. It has to be articulated in a very certain way, which goes back to communication skills. Something, so a lesson that I learned from a gossip columnist was one of the most valuable lessons. I still carry with me to this day. He said, Andrew, ask anyone whatever you need, but be straightforward. So if you need something from someone that you know, or you're blind emailing them or cold calling them, start off with favor. So that way they at least know what they're getting into. And it, it's super helpful because if you skirt around an issue, that's nice, but get straight to the point because a lot of people in the arts, in everything, want to know exactly what you're asking. And if you ask them directly, they're more likely to respond. Such good advice. Yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, people, and especially young people starting out are a little afraid to ask what they want. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of you, what you said, skirting around the issue, but yeah, to get right but to it's it. it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. No one comes out an expert at what they do immediately, unless you're mm -hmm. uh, born a genius, which so many people are, but they just, you can't be good at everything. I'm not a great writer. I have people help me and knowing to ask for help and when to ask for help has helped me tremendously because again, not you're not supposed to be good at everything. You're not supposed to be all around perfect. We all have things that we excel at and things that aren't as strong for our curriculum and whatever we need to do and accomplish. So knowing when to ask for help is a huge ability and in my, I, my thought process is a strength. It's a strength not knowing everything. Cause then mm -hmm. again, going back to what's something I really value about my work is I love working with people and learning from people. But you know, having a creative eye when it comes to photography is something that is, you're born with or you can develop, but also being real with yourself. And I think that's something where we're all brought up to get awards and everything and be the best at what we can do and being real and transparent with yourself. So I'm not a chemist. Why? Because I'm not good at chemistry. I, I, I failed it. So I did not go into that line of work. If you want to be a photographer and you have an innate eye, that is a must have for this career. 
Okay, great. Yeah, so maybe you could tell us a little bit too about what led you into this career. Like I, I read that you studied photojournalism, or, you know, and it sounds like you've um, also been really great at opening, being open to um, collaborating with lots of different people and seeing kind of where the road takes you. So if you could talk a little bit about your, your background, how you got to where you are now. Sure. Um, I grew up on Long Island, not too far from the city. And, you know, it's funny. So I was talking to my mom the other day and we were looking at pictures and cleaning things out with a lot of downtime. And she showed me a picture that my brother took of me. So I was nine years old and we're sitting at the kitchen counter and he just learned how to do a double exposure, which in photography is one frame, but with two things going on in it. It's a way you process things with actual film. So I was nine years old and I was his willing subject. And he's like, okay, do this. Okay, now go to this chair. And after seeing the photo, I looked at it and I'm like, wait, there are two of me having a conversation with myself. I was, I was hooked. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And since then I was like, photography and capturing moments was really awesome. And through my many years of being a photographer, the common thread has been people, has been relationships. And it's, it's special no matter whether it's a wedding or an engagement party or um, helping a client bring their brand to life, it's it's a vulnerability and a power that they have inviting you to immortalize that moment. So coming back to that, so I always carried a camera with me, love that. And then in the summers when I would travel, I would take rolls and rolls of film and shoot everything I possibly could from nature to traveling, to people, to friends, to candids. And just having that experience not only helped me develop an eye to see what worked, what didn't, even though it was expensive with film at the time since digital is not a thing yet, it also showed me that having a camera was kind of like a secret weapon for me to be more social and to break out of my shell. It helped me relate to people. It helped me connect with people. It helped me ease into conversations because then I was able to say, oh, it's the camera, do this, do this, this, and people just welcomed it because who doesn't like to have their picture taken? Um, so that was growing up a little bit. And then I, when I was in high school, uh, the yearbook club went to Montauk and they invited people from different social groups to bring a camera and we we're going to do that. And little did I know they were shooting the cover of the yearbook. So we go up to Montauk and I borrowed a DSLR from a friend because I didn't have anything super professional. We get out there and I'm socializing with people and we're taking pictures and everyone's having a great time. And it then goes into, I went on my own, I ventured out and was just taking pictures of anything and everything I could come across. And having this professional camera in my hand, I felt like a professional photographer. And it was like, there is power in this, but it was just the power to create from the medium of my choice, which was documenting moments and it, it just opened my eyes to a whole new world of an extension of myself. So then processing in black and white and color, it was just very cool. But again, it was the social, the social aspect that I really liked. The creating, that was great. But the social aspect, it, it helped me do things and get into events and get into parties. And then um, I went to school at the University of Buffalo, originally for musical theater. Now, I am not a great dancer. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was not a triple threat. I was really not that threatening. But before I considered even transferring out, I wanted to write for my school paper to challenge myself, but I'm not a great writer. So I started taking pictures. And again, that led me into the Greek life and the sports and the poli sci and everything going on in campus. And I just, I just wanted to document it. I wanted to try new things. And when you're in school, um, Yes, it's it's great. You have all of these opportunities and I wanted to seize the day and try things. I wanted to ask friends who are doing the same things as me, oh, how did you get this photo? How did you accomplish this? This is really cool. And without that pressure of creativity, like I have now with certain brands and projects, it was just a wealth of information. I want to take every opportunity I could. So students, I suggest ask questions, try new things, ask. Try, do it, believe in yourself and trust yourself and tell the story and express the narrative that you want to because, you know, everything that we've done or want to do kind of has been done before. There's nothing original is a phrase that's often said, but if you figure out how you want to tell it and how you want to make this opportunity your own, you can. 
So having the confidence just to tell the story. And to really honor their unique point of view, right? I mean, they, everyone Absolutely. has their own unique point of view. We try to um, share that with the students, you know, to feel pride and, and who they are, where they're from, what their eye is captivated by, and, um, and then apply that with their real skills that they learn. Right? Yes, and there is no right way or wrong way to take a photo. And hear me out before anyone critiques this. So yes, there are fundamental uh, rules that you need to know. And like teachers told me, you have to learn the rules in order to break the fundamental rules. So you get to have fun with the fundamentals and tell your story. You get to learn and sort of like writing, there are libraries and libraries full of books. A lot of them are on the same story. In photography, you can apply the same concept to because there are different perspectives of the same event, different perspectives of the same product, different perspective of the same collection. I mean, you have a white t-shirt. How many different brands have white t-shirts, but why do you go to them? So I've had people approach me to help them express their brand story. Is it is it an eco-friendly brand? Where is it made? What is it made out of? And all of these hundreds and hundreds of factors need to be conveyed through imagery. And that's something they're entrusting in you. And that's, again, when it comes to building a team and working with people to tell the story. Yeah, so yeah, it sounds like, um, you know, the, the experience of where people are hiring you for your particular style, your particular yep. approach to something. And that's something that students that are interested in this field need to understand that they need to hone through their experiences and through, yes, yeah, they're yeah, figuring that out. It's definitely figuring out and it takes, listen, everyone is different. Everyone brings their own past to their creative eye. Everyone brings their own stories of why they are the way they are and who they are and be proud of that because no one is you. And that is a factor that you have to trust and believe in yourself. I had a friend hook me up with an agent to rep me, allegedly. And uh, they said, okay, bring your portfolio. Let's go through and see why you might be right for us. So they went through my book. They saw the product shots I did, everything from jewelry to some architecture photography to fashion week to so, so runway stuff. But also within fashion week, I shoot behind the scenes for different sponsors, beauty products. You have a budget, I have a camera. So it's whatever something does, but it's always something that I feel compelled and want to feed my creative need. And after going through and having some conversation, they said, we don't know if you're right for us because you know, we don't know how to market you. Mm. And I said, okay, then I don't know if you're the right agency for me. And they looked a little bit puzzled that I would retort that confidently. And I was okay with not being rep by them because if you don't know how to rep me, that's okay. I am not for everybody and everybody is not for me. And that's why there are so many photographers and you just have to follow what you think is right, have your own style. And brands today want to see creativity. They wanna see that you can do a whole variety of different things. It's very important. They don't want a one trick pony, but yes, it's, it's a double-edged sword because you want to have something that you're known for, but at the same time, you don't want to be that one trick pony who could only do this. Because if, I mean, I shoot a ton of events. I was out six to seven nights a week, back to back, red carpets, premieres, private events, corporate events, birthday, you name it, I was there. It's not happening right now. Now, hopefully it picks up very soon, but if I didn't have these other skill sets that I fostered, who knows what right. I'd be doing at the moment. Yeah, well, that's a great lesson to learn in kind of that balance of being flexible and being open to other, you know, things that uh, you can do within your 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 industry, too. Um, like if, it, if you yep. weren't doing photography, how, what other like industry or job do you feel like you would be into with your skill set? There are, so photography, my approach to photography is creative problem solving. You have something you want to sell, you have a product you want to push, you have an event that needs to be reported for your PR is this, I have to make that happen. So anything visual, there are so many different jobs and career paths that you can choose for visual, whether it's art directing or cinema or TV 
or um, makeup or lighting, being a lighting designer, there are so many things that go into the the creation of an image. What other skills or positions within the industry could someone um, use to be successful in photography? With photography or even other facets of the industry, um, they could really do unlimited things. There are so many. I mean, knowledge is power and coupling that with your artistic eye and the vision that you want to create you can do a wealth of other jobs, whether it be in uh, TV or broadcast or um, media, journalism. I got a degree in journalism from school, which I think really helped me. Um, but when I went back, when I went to school, it was for, I ended up graduating with a BA in communication because that's fundamental and you need that to do anything and you can apply it to so many different career paths. So um, you can do TV jobs, you can do, anything with lighting, anything with design or decor, interior designing. Um, I have so many different ways that I've been able to express my creativity with photography. I do product, I do interiors. I have a client that has me shoot their jewelry, their interiors, I shot their events, I did their corporate headshots. So while that's still in the field of photography, there it, it's just a different sect of it. Um, I do weddings. I've done small scale weddings and large scale weddings. Uh, so events, events is a huge thing when it starts coming back again. Um, media, I mean, with everything going on in the world politically and socially, documenting that. And it really just comes down to you. And what do you want to capture? What do you want to document? What, what inspires you? And it's a little bit of soul searching, but you find something and it, and it works. I mean, when I changed my major in school and went to something else, photography just worked. I, I love people. I love interacting with people. I love working with people. I love creating with people and for people. And that drives me. That is what lights my fire. That is something that inspires me and getting that shot. Because you can be with models or celebrities and being able to have the communication skills to say that's the shot and people going, wow, that wow factor is my heart and soul. And, you, you know, photography is my passion. It is my job. It is my livelihood. It's everything. Yeah, it's so inspiring to hear all of your, your passionate um, descriptions. Um, and I think the students are going to get a lot out of just hearing you feeling like they're in the moment with you with the shutter. Um, I hope maybe so. You could <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, maybe you could touch a little on um, the technology that you use. So, you know, in, at our school, we actually, um, when we're in the actual school building, we have um, one of the only remaining black and white dark rooms um, for wow. students. But then we also have digital photography and computer labs, and we're working towards having um, more studio photography available for them. Um, so maybe you could talk about some of the technology you feel like they need, um, whether it be the actual cameras or devices they use or software or just kind of your go-to technology. Technology is always evolving and you, it's hard to say where it's going to be going because it evolves so quickly. Things that uh, would take me hours to do a few years ago now are so much more efficient. Um, technology, it helps and a, a knowledge of technology will make your life even easier and staying up to date. I mean, I use social media as a great way to learn technology because it is evolving and it's it's fast paced and it helps me stay in touch with things that are just happening all the time. Um, if, if I rewind and date myself a little bit, the photography industry and media industry was shaking a little bit when phones started having cameras on them and people thought it was going to put professional photographers out of a job and videographers and news out of a job because things were being pumped out so quickly. But that's not the case. There's still a difference and between a, a phone picture and a professional picture. But what I am loving about technology is now that it's so much more mass marketed and everyone could access a, a camera at any moment to take a photo. And by that, I mean what's on their phone, not a professional camera. They can see side by side or even when speaking with someone, what goes into a professional photo? There's a big difference. Now, both of these things are correct. I'm not saying taking iPhone photos or photos with your 
mobile device is a bad thing, but it's, it's again, goes back to storytelling and both stories are great. Mine and the way I approach it through my professional Nikon cameras or my professional equipment and my years of experience with how I craft the story and let's say I light it or produce it is going to yield a different product. Both stories are great and you can see the difference, but I've learned that people are appreciating it and appreciating what goes into professional photography, seeing how hard it is. And it's not just the filter, filter, filter post, which I do as well. It's it's creating. It's the story you're telling through your image. And um, technology has definitely helped that. And then to pair that with video, video is something that I'm learning right now too. And it's something that we need to do to stay up to date with things and pairing that with photography and having both, it's great. Uh, the whole thing with sharing content is amazing. So technology plays a huge role in that because if you're on Instagram or Twitter or any apps, it's easy to share it and build your audience. It's, it's able to take something if you're doing a beauty shoot. I mean, every shoot we do, we have behind the scenes and people share it and it organically spreads the reach of not only your vision as an artist or mine as a photographer, you get to spread your message and your abilities. And I've received a lot of jobs from people saying, hey, I saw your Insta story. Um, you'd be perfect for my project, or I wanna hire you, or who is this makeup artist? They did a great job and we loved your capture. Who is the model? And, and everyone can put out these pieces of digestible information so much easier and so much faster than ever before. So embracing technology is the way to go. And it sounds like it helps create a sense of community for you too, where you can learn from other people oh, yeah. and connect and also get jobs from it possibly. So it's a sense a of community. Tool. And we definitely like putting all the great things out there. Um, but you gotta be careful with what you do put out there because it does live. And even as quickly as you may delete it, you have to realize that you yourself as a person are a brand not just big fancy fashion lines, you as a person are your brand. Um, you want to build a, a relatable thing of who you are and how you present yourself to the world because the phone is the way you do it most of the time. I mean, you wanna say, this is my lifestyle, this is what I like to do. And a lot of people are endorsed by products and some things are ads. But the genuine person behind it is also very important to show if you want to. There's nothing wrong with not posting, but if you're looking to build your career or your brand, putting your best foot forward and presenting yourself in the best light, photography joke, putting yourself in the best light is a really good uh, way to do it on social media. Oh, it sounds like there's so many different ways and that you could take it. Um, so thinking about, you know, how people might start off maybe assisting or, um, you know, learning, apprenticing more people. And then like how, you know, what's kind of the, how do you advance in the occupation? Well, advancement is all, you know, relative. People have different goals. So someone who is a landscape photographer, their goal could be just having something in a magazine, but not necessarily a gallery showing. So it comes down to achieving the goals that you set for yourself and having benchmarks. The biggest competition you'll really ever face is yourself. So if you know that you want to accomplish things, do the homework do the studying, do everything to lead you up to that. Or what I call a retroactive timeline. I'm like, okay, here's what I want to accomplish. Here are the steps to take to ensure success, to make sure that this goal is realistic and holding yourself accountable for it. Um, advancement, I mean, I've had the pleasure of working with so many different people and so many different projects and so many different clients that are so different. And it's given me this confidence that I can take any job and do my best at it because I do the research, I learn. Um, and even in today's world with so many things constantly going, should things take a 180, um, you need to be prepared to learn new things every single day. So this past spring, when all my events came to an abrupt halt and things were canceled, you know, I wasn't gonna just sit there. I was gonna do what most New Yorkers do and fight for something and learn and, you know, pivot. So I turned my focus rather than my relationship based shoots and people based to the city of New York. And I wanted to document the city focusing on, you know, 
iconic landmarks and notable places to see what happens and what a, an image would look like when you remove the elements of people. And I have this series called Places Without Faces where you see just how strong these relationships are. And it, it examined, yes, it's a beautiful city, but the thing that really gives it is the relationships we have with other people, is the building blocks and the fundamentals of life. We all need each other and you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make your dreams come true.